Welcome to the DL Gaming Podcast. I'm Bobby. I'm literally melting. <laughs> it is that hot in here. Yep. Well, it is August. Yeah. It, um, at work today, it was uh, 98, 98 in a valley. Wow. Yeah. You know, I'm so busy at work that I, us- I usually don't matter or don't don't pay attention to it till I actually like sit down, like take a break or something. Mm -hmm. And then there's just sweltering just begins, you know? Yeah. (laughs) So we are missing Nick and Christian today. So just the two of us, like the old days. (laughs) Yep. What are we going to do with ourselves, man? (laughs) Whatever we want. All right. Well, let's get right to it, man. Let's talk about some games. So on the radar, got a few games here that I wanted to bring up. The first one has a ridiculous name. 2D and Top D. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, Ib and Ob. Yeah, and that's what this game reminded me of, too. You have these two characters. It's a puzzle platformer, and the view shifts. It goes from 2D to a three-dimensional view. It reminds me a little bit of other games that have done that, like Fez. Fez? Fez? Fe- Fe- uh, Fez. Fez. Fez, but that changes the angle. So you see 2D of one side, and then you walk around the corner, and you see... 2D, from, but from another side. So it's it's actually a three-dimensional world. Um, this actually tilts up a little bit. So it goes from a platformer to, I don't know, almost like a top-down, more of a top-down isometric angle. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I really like those games where you go through a world and then you can switch to a shadow world or something. Guacamelee did this. Contrast did this. A lot of games were doing this. A lot of uh, platformers were doing this, like, I don't know, six or seven years ago. Yeah, uh, actually, Unbound, the game that I have on uh, my uh, list, also does something similar. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, Top D and, or 2D and Top D. And it's spelled like T-O-O-D-E-E, but it sounds like 2D and uh, Top D, like 3D, I guess. I don't know, coming out August 4th, so just uh, just a few days here. And no price point just yet, but given the graphics, I can't imagine this being that expensive. Yeah, twelve ninety nine. I'm I'm saying. Yeah, but it does, it looks like a fun little co op game. Yeah, it totally does. Hopefully, the uh, puzzles complement the, um, the mechanic. Yeah, that's what it really comes down to. Yeah. Um, so I'll just go right into it. Underworld, uh, Unbound, World, Worlds Apart. Somebody on our Discord um, threw this up there and said that he had. Um, back this on Kickstarter, and now it's an actual game that's coming out on Steam pretty soon. And it looks a lot like, uh, or maybe Ori and the Blind Forest. Um, I'm not sure if it's a Metroidvania, but it's definitely a platformer. Um, looks like hand drawn artwork. Uh, very cool. But it looks like exactly what you were talking about, Bobby. Bobby. He makes these bubbles that are another reality. And so it changes the reality that he's trying to tra- traverse. Mm. So there's like a part where like a boulder's rolling towards him. He does his little bubble thing, and it's a smaller thing. It's a smaller rock, or sometimes it's a completely different object altogether. Or that he, and that's how he gets around it. Um, it's got pretty good reviews. I think it's like an 88% right now. Uh, cute little character. Uh, the character good. looks so familiar. He looks like an 80s character from a cartoon, or I think I saw it on a cereal box, that hooded... Hooded character. It's uh, Orko from He-Man. Yeah, yeah, that's who I'm thinking yep. of. <laughs> that's exactly who I'm thinking of. I'm yeah. surprised you you got that from my limited description. Well, that's only because I just watched Master of the Universe on Netflix, oh. <laughs> and Orko was my favorite character. He looks so cool, you know. Him, Orko, and the Black Mages from Final Fantasy three. They they look so similar. Mm, Do you know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, Final Fantasy three. One of the only Final Fantasies I've played. The only right. Maybe. God, have I played another Final Fantasy? But you played Chrono Trigger all the way through, right? Not all the way through. Oh. I still got to beat that game. It's so fucking epic, dude. Like, the ending is... Man. Really? I might have been the first one that made me cry. Wow. Um, There's a full thing on on your phone. There's a full conversion. Well, I have have the conversion on Steam Mm. of Final Fantasy 3 and Chrono Trigger, and I've started playthroughs, and I don't know... I've done this twice with Final Fantasy III. I've played it once on an emulator and then again on Steam. And the Steam version has changed. It's the mobile version. A lot of people weren't happy about it. It's fine with me. They changed some of the dialogue. The character art looks a little different. I don't know. I didn't care. But I 
I played halfway through the game, which is like, I don't know, 10, 12 hours. And then I kind of give up there. I just haven't completed it. Same thing with Chrono Trigger. Been well, through half the game twice, never finished it. Chrono Trigger is like 60 to 90 hours, though. Okay, maybe I wasn't as far as I thought then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. When they were out, like back in the days of the Super Nintendo, I always liked Final Fantasy III just because it had the larger cast of characters. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why, but I just always thought like that made it better. Chrono Trigger seemed a little more, it, maybe because I never made it too far, but it seemed a little more linear. Like you, you meet this character, they join your team, then you go do this. And There's way less characters. Yeah. I, if I remember, right. There's like four or whatever. Yeah. Although I got to say like playing Final Fantasy three as an adult and like now with this vast gaming knowledge behind me, like it, Final Fantasy three even seems very linear now. Mm. It doesn't seem as open world. Yeah. As uh, as it I was back anywhere. in the nineties, yeah, yeah. And my uh, flying, what was that flying ship? I think it was Final Fantasy two that I rented, and I played for like two hours, and I thought I beat the game, and then it just it was the loading cre- the credits of mm-hmm. the starting game, and I was like, what? No way! Because I was used to buying a game, renting it for I mean, renting a game, beating it that night. You know, I'd stay up all night, beat the game. And then, we, and then this one was like, fuck you, two hours just to get our beginning credit wow. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this looks pretty cool. Um, it's been a while since I played a platformer. Nice. All right. I can't remember if we've talked about this game before, but I'm going to bring it up again. Banner, Banners of Ruin. So this game is another one of those card-based combat games. Although, no. Yeah. All the rage, but this one has mice, and it's got, I don't know, a little more of a realistic art style, mm. I suppose. It, it almost looks a little um, like Renaissance painting, maybe a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it looks cool. It's on sale for fifteen ninety nine. It just came out in 1.0, and uh, I don't know. I've been looking to sink my teeth into a, a game because I'm going to have some more free time with classes ending soon, so... I don't know. I, I still have to play another card-based game because I loved Grifflin so much. So many hours in that Hey, game. Bobby. <laughs> there's this one called Magic the Gathering. Not that kind of card-based game. Okay. I'm talking about um, something like Slay the Spire, mm-hmm. which I haven't played that either. Maybe I should check that one uh, out. I don't know. Tainted... Um... Oh, yeah, that one you were playing not too long yeah, ago. Yeah, it's great. I, I only stopped playing it because I was so busy. Um, or, or Monster Train, either one of those. They're pretty... Um, tainted Grail. Tainted Grail, yep. Yeah. Super solid, dude. You can play it off my account, free. There you go, boom. boom. You're welcome. <laughs> all uh, right. Uh, these are all you now. Okay. The last one I wanted to bring up, this is called Fuga Melodies of Steel. And this is not my type of game, really, but... Uh, but it had an interesting angle. So it's an RPG, I guess a JRPG, I think. It's got that kind of art style. Um, But you play, your team of characters operates a tank. So you move the characters around to different positions in the tank, and I I assume you level them up, and they have different abilities or whatnot. But the combat, you are in this giant fortress of a tank, through the, uh, through the turn-based combat, which I thought, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, but who knows? This game's 40 bucks, a little, little high on the uh, price point Oof. there for me. Yeah. But it does look Looks like... Looks like Metal Slug? I mean, a little bit. On the, uh, on the outside, when you're talking about the actual... Uh, the tanks look like it. But when you're talking about the characters, yeah, hand-drawn art. Yeah. Was that me? Yeah. Sorry, that's your phone. <laughs> I was like, where is that coming from? <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Yeah. And it's still going on. I can't stop it, no, Bobby. Man, you, you're that guy at line in the bank. Yeah. Which, uh, jerk. Oh, my God. Who, who, stands, uh, who stands in line at a bank anymore, though? Where do nope. people stand in line? Um, Disneyland. Disneyland. <laughs> well, either way, you're that guy right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the asshole. Um, oh, this one's got, are those cat or mice? I think those are mice. Anthropomorphic you, you like mice. the anti, uh, anthro- I can't say that word. Anthropomorphic. Anthropomorphic. Um, I mean, if it's an Asian thing, then it's probably going to have anthropomorphic <laughs> characters in it. But you're two for two now, dude. 
Oh, just today. Did you know what I was watching and immediately turned off that Netflix show where they go on dates, but they're all done up and like oh, the dude, full makeup. I thought it was awesome. I I don't know. It just it. Well, it didn't quite have the drama as a comedy. I, was I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I watch it for five minutes and I'm like, all right, let me see your face. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I don't care about a lot of the the, the other art. Stuff. I mean, the the makeup was so good. It's incredible. Like it's the, incredible. Yeah. The it's called uh, Sexy Beast. Sexy Beast. Yeah. And it's on Netflix and. Um, they go to lunch. One, it's like a. It's a dating show. It's yeah, a love it's a connection. Show. It's love connection, but they're in full makeup. They're dressed as like a mouse or um, like perfect, like a movie devil. level uh, makeup, basically. And they go on, so they have no idea what each other look like. And uh, yeah, the girl picks one of three guys, right? Or do, yeah. they, do they switch it? Have one uh, yeah, one sometimes else? like the guy's a contestant. Sometimes the girl's a contestant. Yeah, um, yeah, it's pretty. Imp- Impressive hair and makeup that they do for that. Anyway, all right. Well, I think that's all we got for on the radar. Yeah, we're, <laughs> it's going to be a short episode. We're missing two of our crew. I can't even find the link to our uh, Twitch that I've been trying to promote it on our Discord this no, whole time. Twitch. <laughs> well, just <laughs> you happen to ask. It's twitch.tv <laughs> slash digital underscore logic. <laughs> Good thing we had set that up, dude. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, let's talk about some games that we've played. Um, this has been kind of an interesting week for me. I've actually completed some games. What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> when does that happen? Yeah. We're not supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah. We play two hours and then we say that we think it sucks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I played, I, this isn't really a big deal, but I finished Battlefront 2. The, both the, um, the main story and the little DLC they put at the end. And it's terrible. It's probably one of the worst single player games I've ever played. I mean, Oof. it's it's not like offensively bad, but it's just so lackluster that it's hardly worth bringing up. The only thing that I want to mention is it's kind of nice that they tried to incorporate it with the Star Wars movies that were coming out at the time. Mm. I, I don't know if I, I appreciate that attempt or if it annoys me because what really annoys me about Star Wars is how they have to tie everything in together. I, I don't know if you've been watching The Bad Batch or not. Mm, I, I watched the first like two episodes, three episodes. Uh, then you probably didn't see this episode. They have to go rescue some character named Moochie. I think it's Moochie. Yeah. And they get there. Turns out Moochie's actually a rancor. And mm. it's not just any rancor, it's oh, Jabba's yeah. rancor, yeah. you know? And it's like, come on, like literally everything in this, this yeah. wide, vast Star Wars universe has to tie back to the central characters. And it's something they always have to do, and it's super annoying. So in Battlefront, you know, in The Force Awakens, when uh, Rey is wandering Jakku and there's that downed Star Destroyer in the sand looks yeah. super cool. Yeah. Yeah. You participate in the battle where that happens. Mm. And there's a part in the game where he said where your buddy Shriv says, Oh wow, well you look at that and the camera moves <laughs> over and then it pauses on there for a second just to give you a minute to recognize that hey, this was in the movie. That's and awesome. Really draw attention to it. Yeah. And then But that's how you do it right, right? Like the other one is I feel like they're just kind of shoehorning it in there. I don't know. Just, just the mere fact that it's done now. Oh come on, me. Bobby! It's no, so it, that you go. It's so that people people love that. <laughs> you don't love it, but people do. Be it, they're like, uh, oh, that's the thing from the thing. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's the thing from the thing. Yeah, there was this amazing show that was on called Man Seeking Woman, and nobody really watched it. It was kind of flew under the radar, but check it out. It's like three seasons. I think it's on Hulu right now. It's so good. But there's a one of the episodes in the third season, like he get, it's got Jay Baruchel. Uh, um, you know who he is. He's been in a lot of those Seth Rogen comedies, but he's sitting watching this uh, TV and he gets hooked on all these like ten part documentary series. And he's watching this one about Converse, like Converse shoes. Uh-huh. And then like you just see him watching TV and somebody on the television's reading a letter. And then at the end it says signed Archibald Converse. And then his eyes gets wide and he goes. The guy from the shoe, <laughs> and that just pretty much sums up like all that, all that dude, stuff dude, for me. Uh, my, so my buddy is an '80s fanatic, and all you know, I mean, all he's doing is bringing up lines from movies that nobody, mm-hmm. and he'll just keep going, and nobody know, nobody in the room mm-hmm. is following along, but he's doing these deep, not even that deep, but it's just like 
It was 30 years ago, dude. Like, <laughs> like uh, No, I don't remember. 40 years ago? How, how long are we talking the about? The 80s? 30 years ago. 30 or 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Depends um, on where you're at on the decade. Yeah. So anyway, um, so I'm like, li- and, and he's been listening to the audio books because he, he drives for a living now. So I said, listen to Ready, <laughs> Ready Player One and, uh, and get back to me. Oh my God, the laundry list of texts I was getting. Yeah. They talk about this stuff. Like, it is all he cares about is like. Yeah, that's uh, all that's in that book. That, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I didn't read the second one. I read the first it's one, and the pretty, first one's the yeah. same thing. It was a big yeah. letdown. A lot of. A lot of I, I don't even know if they're that deep cuts. No, they're not. Uh, Lady no. Hawk, is that a deep cut? In the cut? second one, a lot more. Okay. Because, you know, they used them all up in the first one. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody said they had a theory that uh, this is probably not like specific to any one person, but wherever you're at, people are always obsessed with the decade 30 years ago. So in the Mm. 80s, they were obsessed with the 50s. Yeah. And then I guess in the 2010s, we were all obsessed with the 80s. I don't know. Yeah. Could there's some maybe so 90s, 90s comeback coming around this time? um, Sam's watching uh, because she's a 90s kid. She's watching um, the the 90s. I don't know what it's called. It's on Netflix, and it goes through all these different important phases of the 90s. And oh, uh, okay. th- there's a whole episode on autotune. And it's really, really, like, good stuff. Um, how it came about, uh, T-Pain's whole thing about it, and how mm-hmm. <laughs> how other artists were using him as a feature. So, basically... So that you wouldn't say that um, L- Jennifer Lopez was using autotune. Oh, Jennifer loses auto- autotune. You can't you can't listen to her because it has such a negative connotation. Mm-hmm. It was Jennifer L- Lopez featuring um, T Pain, mm-hmm. and people were basically using him as a scapegoat, but also using him, as, you know, because it's all it is is a setting. Uh, mm-hmm. Within, uh, I, I think Apple's Garage Band or something like that. And, but mm-hmm. it took him; nobody would tell him what it was, and so he just went setting by setting. Uh, he said it took him like two years to find what it was. To find the one, yeah, setting. to find the to one, find setting. the one switch or combination of settings. Yeah, <laughs> in Garage Band. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Ugh. Where were we? Where is, it, we're ta- where is this a video game podcast? Oh, we were talking. And by about... the way, I don't think they're all rats in this Banners of Ruin. I think they're there's is bears. That a bear? And... Yeah. Yeah. There's oh, bears animals. And wolves. Anthropomorphic it's animals. Anthropomorphic animals. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was talking about Battlefront Two and how disappointing that single player was. Dude, you've been all you do is talk shit about that game and continue to play it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to beat the single player. Like I had to do that. It's like a two-hour game, right? If mm, that. No, the DLC is really, really short. Like, maybe an hour. The, like, three missions, really quick. The initial game, eh, maybe five or six hours. It's just, it's a lot to do at once because mm. it's pretty dull. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but the other game that I beat was called Papetura. Now, I played, or I mentioned this game a while ago. This has been on my radar for a while. Yeah. This is a beautifully animated puzzle adventure game. And actually, let me bring up this video on YouTube because there's an outstanding video on YouTube uh, called The Making of Cape Tura. And really, this is the most exciting part about the game. Unfortunately, the puzzles in this game are not that good Uh, some of them are even just straight up guess and check Mm. like there's not a lot of thinking through and solving the puzzles um so i was a little disappointed in that but the game really makes up for it in its graphic style and the process that they use to make this is they this team it must be a small team of people they actually took paper and crafted these environments and lit them and then photographed them, put them into a computer and then tinkered with them a little bit more and turned them into the levels that you're now playing through. So the game itself has this incredibly realistic look to it. Even though the animations aren't like 
super great. You know, they're a little wonky, but um, the settings are absolutely beautiful, and it really plays with with light a lot. And uh, it's fucking gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, just from what I've seen. But you've played the game. Is it one of these things where, uh, you know, after the first fifteen minutes, it's worn off the 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 appreciation for this art style? Not really, because you go into different areas and you see different things. And here's the thing. The game was a lot shorter than I expected. It, this game is roughly one to two hours, depending on how long it takes you to solve the puzzles. So it's it doesn't really wear out its welcome just because it isn't around for very long. What'd you pay for it? This game, what is it on Steam? It is eleven ninety nine. I I know I got it cheaper on that. I think it was on GOG or something, but I I got it on sale. Um, I mean, if you want to go like price per hour, yeah, maybe that may not be worth it because it is kind of a short game. But you know, catch but, it on a sale or whatever. Like I, I'm pretty impressed. And it, we say this all the time, right? Side scrolling adventure game or puzzle adventure game, really good graphic style. And then we clumsily try to explain the graphic style. But um, the work, like the the craftsmanship that went into this, is very impressive. Yeah, there. You know, I, I I don't think anybody has the argument anymore. Our video games art or whatever, but this is clearly art. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's handcrafted beauty. Yeah, it, it would have been nice if the game if there had been more. Yeah. To the game. But yeah, they probably put in so many mad hours. Yeah, exactly. Dude. I'm like, just watching this video and like everything that he's doing I'm to exhausted. create this level. I'm exhausted watching. Yeah. I, I imagine it. Just, that's what it came down to. It was just difficult to make this. But who knows? This could be, this could lead to something else. Their second project. <laughs> yeah. Could, could, could you imagine that, uh, you know, so, some big way at EA is like, love it. We need two more. And their hands are all arthritic. They just, <laughs> can't, they just can't do it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm always impressed by people who can work with their hands like this. Yeah. It's, yeah. Check it out. It, whatever Bobby just said doesn't do it service. You got to actually see it. Yeah. What he's designing here, this is actually where you start, the little cocoon where you begin and, and, God, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like, I'm thinking about how long he spent designing that, and you spend 10 minutes in there, yeah. five minutes in there. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I, I was thinking about that when I was playing. Um, it takes two. I was playing that this week. And they, you know, towards the end, uh, I didn't know this because I just got there for the first time, but, um, you know, it gets darker because a lot of the game, it, you're in the little girl's imagination. And then after that, you are kind of uh, the book takes over, uh, and mm-hmm. he it's no longer the girl's I- imagination, and it takes like a darker turn. And the uh, once you get out of the have to be a little kid thing, and they, it opens up the possibilities. The, I mean, huge giant worlds that are so beautiful, but you, you're literally just running through it as fast as possible. You mm-hmm. know, there's no appreciation for all this work that went in. If you would just stop for one second and just look around, there's all this cool stuff, but you might do it if it's a single player game, but in two player games a lot of the times you're just running forward. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cuz cuz you you appreciate the other person's time and also, you know, you're just going to trying to get it done. Uh, a lot of times in single play, you, you'll stop and smell the roses, but co-op, it's hard to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think artwork generally goes unappreciated in games a lot. Yeah, and um, to that and I want to talk about The Ascent. Um, Chad and I played it. This is the first time Chad and I have played a game in like over a year and a half. Uh, we played for about an hour, and th- that was it. Um, so this is a... It's a few things going for it. It's kind of like a twin stick shooter. And then it's also like has some Diablo in there. Um, it's in a cyberpunk world. And that might be the best thing it has going for it. Uh, the backgrounds are incredible. Um, I, as I was playing, I, I kept thinking about um, Nick. And when he's talking about these hive worlds that are just like 
trillions of people on a planet and the, you know the, it's kind of like a what's that Star Wars uh planet that's all city Coruscant yeah Coruscant and like the deep the sewers of Coruscant must be like like what this game looks like it's just dystopian cyberpunk and it looks fantastic you're looking at these backgrounds and the what's going on in the like the world operating as it were at while well, you're you're just walking about and shooting bad guys but all this shit's going on in the background another thing it reminded me of was black mesa when you're on the tram mm. and like there's just shit going on in the background and it just kept drawing my eye meanwhile i'm getting eaten by aliens but um besides that um like diablo you're fighting like waves of monsters and stuff like that uh, you're shooting them but there's not like drops all the time and you're inundated by inventory and all that stuff there it's but there is progression so there's a lot of different things going on you can uh mutate your body uh with putting on different kinds of um enhancements you can there's a skill tree uh, apart from that and then there's another uh, and then there's equipment so there's three different things that you have to manage and uh, it's not overwhelming or anything like that you, like you just play the game and but there is a lot of variation you can go for a, like a melee build you can go for um, a shooting build you could do all kinds of stuff um but we were definitely having fun and i will continue to play this uh, definitely a good co-op game to to jump in with your friends. Um, as I was playing this, or when I was loading this up, I scrolled right past uh, RoboQuest that I talked about last week, and I'm like, hmm. why am I not playing this? Like, I really need to be playing this. And the reason that I'm not playing it is Magic the Gathering Arena. It is taking up all my free time, like 100% of it. And I'm glad to see that, um, I don't know if it's me or... Um, just, you know, the new set coming out. But a lot of people on our Discord are sharing their usernames and we're all getting together and starting to play. And it's so much fun. I've been playing against, I mean, I wouldn't say playing against JP Diddy. I've been fucking trouncing that motherfucker uh, over and over. Uh, poor guy. Uh, hey, he won once. But um, yeah, it, it's great. Um, There was a time in Magic that we all refer to when when I started playing and then the sub subsequent years, we would refer to when magic was fun. And when magic mm -hmm. was fun was like before you found out that there was a tournament and there was like a meta and like these mm -hmm. are the cards you need. It was when you just build what you can with what you have and go play your friends because they're on the same level as you. And that's how I totally feel where I'm at with Magic the Gathering Arena. Because everybody that I know, I feel like, uh, has it dumped a lot of money into this. And so we're all fundamentally playing with the same cards. And we're all just kind of playing each other. And mm -hmm. that's all there is to it. There's no tryhards dumping $700 yeah. into it. Well, plus the internet changed things a lot, too. Like, you could go online and you could look up what the best deck is and yeah. why it is the best deck. We used to call them net decks. Yeah. yeah, net decks. When yeah. I was playing the Star Wars CCG, um, it was right around the time where, I mean, there was an internet side to it. There were like uh, message boards where people would trade games and talk about the game as well. But it wasn't like it is today where you, first Google search comes up and it's just like, boom, there it is. Like, oh, not these just are all that. So I was like, I was looking up net decks, right? Just to mm -hmm. see, like, get some ideas. And uh, the way that these websites make money is like, you can just make a click and they'll send you that deck you know what i mean like in card form mm -hmm. and they have different price tags i anywhere from 150 dollars to like 750 dollars wow. because you know it's got all the hot cards in it but like i said with magic arena um you have wild cards you can make any card you want in wherever there was you know like as long as you have the wild card for that level, you know, mythic, rare, rare, whatever, uh, if you you can make whatever you want. So if you get enough myth, um, uh, wild cards, you can build one of those crazy decks. You could probably only build one, you know, for free, mm -hmm. but you'll have one solid, you know, tournament deck. Yeah. And, and for free, dude. Like, I'm having, 
like like I said, the grind is fun. So it's not grind. It's just like I'm just having a great time. At a certain point, um, so I was I was unlocking a pre constructed deck every day, every twenty four hours. And then when I was gonna unlock my sixth one, uh, they gave me a quest to cast one hundred spells. It took like eight games. And then uh it, they give me five packs, five uh, precons. So now I have eleven precons. It, they stop giving them to me, but you know, with those precons, you can mix them up and make your own, you know, combinations of games, or you could just like uh, modify them to have cards that you like prefer over other ones. Because you know, pre-constructed decks they're good, but they also put crap in there because they they know that like they want you to fuck tweak with it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no way to avoid the net decks, but I guess it just comes down to balancing, too. Well, you know, I'm not playing ranked either. So mm-hmm. if I were going to go to ranked, that's when I'm going to run into then a Then you got to go super that. try hard. Yeah, you got to go super try hard. But I'm just in the magic still fun. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm at that stage, and I don't, I don't even know if I want to make that jump. I'm having so much fun in just random play. And you only have to wait like three seconds for a match. And yeah, dude, people aren't like rage quitting or it's just a good overall, like I said, 10 Do they have 10. things in place to prevent people or to penalize people who rage quit? No, but even if they do, you get XP and gold for beating them. Mm, so okay. like when so it's I, like um, uh, Hearthstone where if they leave, you just automatically win. Yeah, you automatically win. And you, like you said, you get accolades for it. So, there's a bunch of times, you know, I'm playing on my phone, something comes up, and I concede out of nowhere. I don't, I have zero guilt because I know that that person's mm-hmm. working towards their quest for the day, their dailies, you know? Yeah. And and it, and it pays towards that. Hmm. I do miss those magic times when, you know, pre-internet, pre-net deck, all that, where you would play with just your friends and you would, a, a meta would build just within <laughs> your circle yeah. of friends. And then, I, I don't know if you, you must have gone to like tournaments and stuff yeah. or even casual stuff, but my friends and I would go to that and then you'd get a taste of what other people were doing in their metas and you'd learn a few things. And um, it was also based, the whole thing with customizable card games is it's a collectible card game too. Yeah. So your deck was based on availability on yeah. what you could get. And when you were a kid, it, you couldn't just shell out a bunch of money and buy boxes of these cards and get whatever you want like you do it pack by pack maybe you got something good i remember one time i got yoda in a pack when the dagobah set was just released and i was like oh my god and that that was like the centerpiece for my whole deck now was like around yoda because that was one of the best cards that i had so yeah absolutely man and that's what john was talking about last night he's like all right these planeswalkers are pretty a planeswalker is like something you can build a deck around and Mm -hmm. a lot of people do it's like a. What do they call that in Hearthstone when they they brought something similar to the Planeswalkers in? It was like this um, character, like they had Cthulhu or something. I, I don't know if it worked exactly the same. Well, but. it's almost like because like uh, you as a, a human being playing Magic the Gathering, you're you are the Planeswalker, mm-hmm. and you're getting hit when the creatures get through right yeah but in hearthstone it's this character that's getting hit uh that you select like the hunter the rogue right yeah and so this planeswalker card is kind of like you're putting down a character that is a proxy for you well when they attack you they can choose to attack a planeswalker or you Mm -hmm. and so it, it, it adds a whole other dimension to it so uh John's like, yeah, I'm going to look at what Planeswalkers I have and build a deck around it because obviously they're they're pretty strong. Uh, that's one route you can go. I mean, I have zero. Besides, I did buy the season pass because I'm fucking addicted, mm-hmm. and I wanted to get more How much out is of the season pass. Twenty dollars. Oh, yeah. yeah, and dude, like it doubles your rewards. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm like, I'm grinding it out and having a great time. Why not double my rewards? And it's retroactive, like as most. Um, season passes are and um uh what was i saying i don't know <laughs> got knocked off my thing uh but either way uh in love w- would be the name yeah it seems to be all the rage on the discord yeah uh you know i was actually 
checking in on the Star Wars CCG, the the site where you can play that. If you look up like StarWarsCCG.org, um, they have a they had this web version that was a lot better than the old the Hollow Theater application that they used to have like 10 years ago the web version was a lot better but it was still like not that great nothing like this i mean this uh magic the gathering arena looks like hearthstone practically with all the animations and everything looks great um but they do have a new version for the star wars ccg that's built in unity so it's a lot better it's still you know it's not up to this it's a much smaller team everybody's working for free all volunteers you gotta give a shot bobby what's going on here magic the gathering (sighs) I don't Come know. on, dude. You had a good time. I don't know, man. I get obliterated in these card games because I'm so new at them. Uh, I thought that, that the progression was, I mean, I, I was winning a lot. But I, w- at the very beginning, I, I could see that I, they were putting me up against beginners. And I was like, oh, that's pretty good, even mm-hmm. though that were unranked. Like, it, it knew how many card games I had under my belt and stuff. Okay. Um, so it was giving me the... And I was just go, running right through them, but it, I, they're going to work you into it, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like. There's some matchmaking at play yeah, here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. J- just the last thing. Um, I really, I think I touched on it last week, but if you want to make a free-to-play game, you need to understand that those people that are playing for free add value to your service. Like, it makes wait time smaller and just a larger community is better. So you have to, like, literally pay them to be around and this game knows that and it pays you to be around i have a collection of like 500 cards or i don't know fucking how many 600 cards for free you know for just mm-hmm. having fun wow yep cool 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 <laughs> <laughs> the more you say it the less i believe it all right well so explain this fucking hoopla Bobby, to me. Oh, yeah, we had some hoopla this week. Last yeah, we week did. was uh, some Blizzard hoopla, but I guess we're kind of used to that by now. Yeah. It's always something with them. Um, I talked to Chad. I was like, Chad, yeah, like, you know, why are you harassing people is what I told him. <laughs> and, it, and he's like, oh, dude, it's causing so much problems at work. That's all he said. Uh, yeah. Activision Blizzard. Yep. Um but yeah, so this week, the, the whole thing that everybody is enraged about is apparently there's been some regulations in states, including ours, California, where high, or, uh, I don't know, man, this is a, a very complicated issue, but just the general gist of it is that high-end computers or electronics can't be shipped to certain states because they have new laws regulating... Um, the power that these things use. Mm-hmm. So the way that the... <laughs> Are we going to start getting an Energy Star uh, <laughs> PCs? I mean, there's a lot of stuff already in place, but it, and this was started a long time ago, and it's just coming into... It's now affecting gaming computers, which is why a lot of gamers are talking about it. Um, there's a really good video by Jay's Two Cents that does a good job of summarizing all this as best it can. Uh, there's a lot of really weird things. So the clickbait title is, um, you know, the government's trying to steal your your gaming computer, right? Like any high-end PCs, they want to ban them. I just chained mine to the wall today. <laughs> they're coming for it. <laughs> um, but that's not really what's happening. In fact, like a lot of the high-end gaming PCs make it past the filter on this. And even or the mid-tier ones are more affected. So there's some things that don't quite make sense so about strange. this. Yeah, and they they probably need to work some of that out. Um, But basically what this means is that if you go to some of these sites like Dell or Alienware and you live in California or one of these other states affected and you try to order one of their computers, they won't ship it to you Mm. Um, because they have not yet gotten the computer up to code so it meets these requirements. And these requirements, um, they're based on all sorts of different things. Some of it, including the hardware that you have in your computer, but also the power settings of the computer as well. So the whole idea is that they want, they're targeting computers that use up a lot of energy by just staying on all the time. And right. they don't have these power saving features and they use up a lot of juice. Um, and of course, this is uh, the bottom line for gamers is, yeah, it prevents you from buying pre built You can still build a custom PC, no problem. This has no can effect Can you on though? Uh, can you? How long until they come for those? <laughs> no, no, I meant like there's no parts still, right? Um, it's getting better. 
Yeah, actually, uh, like the AMD R9s, um, like the 5900X, mm-hmm. uh, are those R9s or R7s? I can't remember. But uh, the 5900X, those are on uh, Amazon for uh, close to MSRP right now, last I checked. Graphics cards are still ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but processors seem to be a little bit better. Um, but yeah, man, it, it's, God, it's getting harder and harder to be a PC gamer. I don't know. This whole thing with like the power regulations, we're going to forget this even happened in a month, I think. Like this, the yeah. companies are going to say, okay, I'll tweak this knob here. I'll do that. I'll do whatever yeah. I need to do. It's up to code. Now I'm shipping that. Yeah, because for sure. I think Dell can't ship certain computers to California. They're losing business. I'm sure they're going to do something about and it. And I kind of feel like uh, they were going out, they're barking up the wrong tree. They pro- probably somebody saw how much, uh, mining was you know energy consumption mining was doing mm-hmm. and then some said oh computers are evil and then somehow regulation got passed i really well, think no, it was no. probably it, something like that well i i don't know maybe that that has something to do with it but th- this whole thing doesn't just affect gaming computers like it's affected other things before it affected gaming computers mm-hmm. we just nobody cared until it was oh, gaming computers gotcha, gotcha. yeah this was started like I Our think, people didn't care. Yeah. I, I think like the first regulations were like set in place like 2015 or something. Mm. So, I mean, this has been, and the companies have known for like years and years that this was going to happen. So, oh, gotcha. you know, it's, I don't know, it's a complicated issue, but I'm sure it'll work itself out and we'll all be able to play video games. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. It's going to, they're just going to do what they have to do yeah. to stay in business. Yeah. And then yeah. Activision Blizzard is going to do something else and then we'll all be talking about that. Yeah. Fucking Chad. <laughs> What's Chad going to do next? All right. So. Listener questions? I guess so. Listener questions. God. We're zipping right through. I'm not used to moving this fast. All right. First one comes from Warconius. Do you think how a game does financially carries the same cachet for gamers that it would for moviegoers and the box office? Hmm. First of all, Definitely. does that carry cachet at the box office? I guess it does. It does. It does. People like to brag about Somewhat. it. Somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah. Well, like Marvel, that Avengers movie made like the most money that a movie's ever made. That was a real big deal. Yeah. And well, they cheated though. They had two releases. I feel like they cheated. They che- they released it and like six months later they had the like 3D version or whatever. Yeah, it but was. still, it, it would have. I mean, what's crazy is that it, the re-release. Yeah, they they finally beat Avatar. Yeah. What's crazy is that Avatar made that much money back then. Yeah. Like, that's for sure. That's crazy. I, I, while you were on. YouTube, I saw that there's maybe the trailer for Avatar 2. I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? No. Oh, I have I'll have not. to check that out. Uh, apparently, 2 and 3 are in the can. They're just being edited right now. Yeah. Yeah. I um, cannot wait. Um, I, I would say less. Because uh, I feel like people, yeah. have say, people will be like, I will sell that Marvel movie by being like, dude, it's the best uh, it's the most money making movie ever. You should watch it, but I, I probably wouldn't say that about a game. I would, yeah, you wouldn't. I that's would talk a weird about brag for. Yeah, a game. I would talk about other things about it. Like when GTA Five sold, like what was it, eight hundred million dollars worth, yeah. or eight hundred, like some ridiculous number. Like there were some articles about that, or like I remember hearing about that, but nobody's just like. I mean, we don't come on the podcast and be like, "Oh my god, dude, Pape Tura made this much money." You yeah, know, that's not. A, but in when we're talking about movies. A lot of times you'll lead with how much it made. Yeah, you lost. always bring up the box office. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think it's quite the same. But what are the things that we do? I mean, how do you pitch a game? Yeah, you 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 talk about all the other games. It's kind of like that's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot of word of mouth for me. Like, really, what um, what other people are playing and what they say about it. But yeah. Except for Emilio fucking jacking <laughs> off about Magic the Gathering for two weeks and getting zero interest uh, out of you. All right. All right. Next question comes from Zap. Do you think that Game Pass, that the Game Pass style services are the future of buying and playing games? Why do you think Valve hasn't created their own Game Pass style system? Two part question. That second one's really hard. Uh, if uh, any, oh, that's the easy one, man. They don't think? need to. Yeah. That's true, <laughs> but it's already in play. If they wanted to. I think it'd be pretty easy for them to do. Would they really make that much money? They're getting 30% off of every game they sell. So would they really make a lot of money? But I do feel like they're losing 
they are losing, um, you know, a significant amount of sales to, uh, you know, Game Pass and the other ones. Not that much, but Game Pass is definitely taking a big chunk. I don't know. Because Valve was here, or Steam was here for so long, a lot of people like myself, have so many games in there that that's kind of where they prefer to go to games. So yeah. they, they've kind of lodged themselves as the home base for your video games. But would, like, like here's the average you got to weigh out, right? Does, um, I don't know what the average person on Steam buys, one AAA, two AAA per year, and a couple indies, right? So that's mm-hmm. $150 maybe. And then if you're... Is that more money guaranteed than if you were to pay ten dollars a month, guaranteed every year? Yeah, it's tough. See, Origin had an easier time with this with their Game Pass because it was all EA exclusive yeah. titles, right? So it was a great way for them to promote their games. Valve doesn't really have that. I mean, I guess they could do that with like Half Life or Artifact, or <laughs> uh, that was a joke, but. They don't really have the games to do that with, so they'd have to, I guess, make deals with other developers. It would be hard, yeah, because they have s- every person that every developer they have mm-hmm. uh, an agreement with, they have to go and ask if it's okay for them to put them on their yeah. new platform. And it seems like the companies that are doing the whole Game Pass thing, it's a way for them to push their ecosystem forward. Like Microsoft Game Pass wants you to be part of the Microsoft ecosystem. Yeah. Origin wants you to be part of the EA ecosystem. And everybody's already part of Steam. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah. So Valve doesn't need to do that. Like, everybody else is trying to pull people away from Steam, and Steam's already got everybody. So Speaking of which, I have the Ascent. JP Diddy has the Ascent. Both bought them on Steam. Guess what? It's on Game Pass. I I have to make this new... Well, Nick bought the Ascent for me, so that's why. But uh, You really got to check. I got to check way more often, dude. It's happened... Probably twice this year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the first part of the question, are Game Pass style services the future? I feel like we've hit peak pass. Like peak pass. I can't even think of another company that would make one, but Bethesda already jumped on with uh, Game Pass, right? If Steam doesn't do it, I don't know who else would. Maybe GOG, somebody like that? No, I don't think they'd do anything like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Microsoft Game Pass seems like, it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better than that yeah. because they and have, it keeps getting better. Yeah. They, they release titles. They come out day one. They're available on Game Pass. Triple A uh, titles, like three a year. That's mm-hmm. pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you're going to top that. Plus they got a pretty wide library too at this point. Yep. Still but, not worth it, Bobby. Not, not Bobby shekels. <laughs> His I mean, it's not worth shinier. it to me, though. I, I feel like you need to ask the... Um, uh, we're fucking old, man. Like, yeah. we, don't, we don't... Our opinions don't matter anymore. Um, you need to ask the next generation of kids coming up here. Like, they're the ones that have not... They don't have 7,000 games in their Steam library, you know? I always think about bits for the show, but never do them. And one of the bits I want to do is, like, once a week, just getting something from Game Pass and just kind of, like, promoting it. Because, like... Mm-hmm. Why not? It's free for me, and you know I might shed light on something that somebody hasn't said, seen. Yeah, it's tough to gauge because, like, we grew up in a world where there wasn't even free to play. Yeah, like we had shareware for a bit in the '90s. That was a thing, but it, things really changed during the late 2000s, and all of a sudden, like, you know, it it became so much easier to play video games. My fucking mouth dropped when I saw that. Uh, tf2 was going free to play i was like what does that mean i don't yeah. understand what that means it really was the pioneer in the free to play thing like they're the, a pioneer and so it's the greatest game of all time yeah shit maybe i'll be playing that this week yeah <laughs> all right you want to wrap it up bobby yeah let's talk about what we're going to be playing so i don't know maybe tf2 but actually you know what i i have wanted to play and i keep forgetting about it is warcraft 3 mm. i've been slowly Ever since Reforged Reforged came out, I've been slowly working my way through the campaign Mm -hmm. on the hardest difficulty. And I don't know. I've got to be more than halfway through it at this point. But I want to pick that up. Maybe I'll play a little uh, multiplayer, um, some customs or something. So when you get to a point where there's like a cinematic, it cuts to the old cinematics or they have new ones? 
Well, it's the old cinematics, but it's with the new textures. Mm. So, I mean, it's pretty much the same. Okay, gotcha. Uh, let me talk about my hot sauce, Bobby. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, it's called Insidious with the word seed in it. It's kind of like a clever thing we did because it's full of seeds and we sneakily snuck it in there. Um, if you take a look at it, it looks super duper hot because it looks like chili seeds. But no, there's a bunch of like yummy seeds in there. Um, pumpkin seeds and all kinds of stuff. Uh, you can go to our website, insidious.com. And if you use promo code DLG, you get 10% off your first purchase. And uh, it's super yummy and completely original. So check it out. Uh, tell me what you think. And I will uh, let you shield on my show. <laughs> um, as far as what I'm playing, I mean, I don't see any. I don't, I'm not going to be slowing down on MTG. Uh, I don't see that at all. I do have to play some more Verdun, so we have we have to mm -hmm. fit, we have to wrap that up. It's game then, of the week, <clears throat> yeah. And then going later, um, I'm pretty excited about New World. I have only heard good things about it. It comes out at the end of this month, so I want to be playing that. Uh, it'll uh, uh, definitely one of us will throw it up for the game of the week. Um, yeah, but going into next week, Rebel Quest. If anybody will play with me, Ascent. Those are the two I would like to play. When, like, literally, John and I will sit down and, like, are ready for some ascent? Yeah, yeah, right after one game of Magic. And then we'll just play Magic for 45 minutes, and then <laughs> we'll, and then our wives are yelling at us. So no interest in Orcs Must Die 3? I mean, I'd check it out. But I feel like I already have two games that I'm not playing that are better than it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, and speaking for Bobby and nobody else and myself, uh... Orc titties. They gotta be hideous, huh? Warts and shit. It's gotta be terrible. Can't be good. It's a horror show, dude. Behind, <laughs> behind the old brazier. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a female orc. Orcs. Yeah, dude. World of Warcraft. An orc Full head. of them. Yeah. Okay. If you say so. <laughs>